Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. In verse 14, he said, Concerning you, brethren, I myself am also convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to admonish one another. Now, what's it mean to admonish someone? Instruct, to teach them, to correct them. It's a, it's a word, it's an instruction in doing the right thing. Admonishment isn't just instruction for a catch-all, like, learn anything. It's a, it's a how, to, how to encourage someone. It, it's it's um, got a kin, a kin word that is used in the scripture um, called exhortation. Exhortation means to encourage someone to do what is right in the sight of God. So admonishment and exhortation, these two from the same root, is to instruct, to do what's right. Not before men, but before God. And Paul says, I, I know you guys are able to do this. You're able to instruct each other. Now, how could they be able to do this? He's never been there. What, what is Paul relying on to, to be guiding them in instruction? The Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit that existed everywhere that he, he said, I, I tell you guys, I've gone, I've gone through this whole region of the, of the Gentiles preaching and in, if you read with me, he says, he says, I've written boldly to you on some points to remind you again because of the grace given to me from God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, ministering as a priest the gospel of God so that my offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Sanctified means set apart for a holy use by God's Spirit. Therefore, in Christ Jesus, he said, I have found reason for boasting in things pertaining to God. Another place he'll write, boasting is necessary, although it's not always profitable. You know, but if you're going to boast, let, boast like this. Boast, look what he boasts about. I love this. He says, I, I'm going to boast. He says, I'm not going to, I presume I won't speak anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, resulting in the obedience of the Gentiles by word and deed and in the power of, of signs and wonders in the power of the Spirit. Okay, and he, he recognizes God's Spirit. Did, did God's Spirit do miracles for Paul in the book of Acts? Do you remember he's, he's making tents, he's talking to Priscilla and Aquila and giving them some instructions about the Lord. And, and it says they were coming and they were taking Paul, Paul's there in the Mediterranean region. It's hot, they're, they're so intense. And he's got, a, he's got a, a handkerchief, we would call it, a sweat rag. And he wipes his brow, you know, it's covered with his sweat. He sets it down, and someone comes and steals it. Now, I don't know if you noticed, is this in the Bible? Well, why did they take his, his handkerchief? They figured he touched it, right? I mean, he's got his sweat on it. We, we got evidence. Paul touched this. And you know what they did with it? Just to show you that, the, 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 I mean, we have a God so big. When people say, how big is your God? I said, let me tell you, they, they stole Paul's hanky and they took it and laid it on a sick person. And you know what happened? They were healed. And they went, that worked really good. And so they kept stealing his handkerchiefs. Poor guy. You know, he's making tents. He's like, I got to cut a few extra hankies out today because every time I wipe my brow, I set it down. And I can't find my handkerchief. Where'd it go? And they keep taking his handkerchiefs and they keep putting on sick people and dead people and, and, and lame people and they're getting healed. And Paul says that the gospel was being furthered by the power of God's Spirit. He knew it wasn't him. It wasn't his sweat that did it. It was God. But it shows the miraculous power of our God. What a great God we serve. That he could do something so great that just, you know. And Paul says, guys, I, I've been passing through the whole Gentile region. <laughs> all the way, uh, Erechim, all, all the way through through up to what we call Greece today. He said, oh, that whole region, I preached the gospel to, to everywhere I could. And he says, and, and the Spirit was doing great things by His power. And, and so that from Jerusalem, round about all the way 
to Ilokam, all the way he says, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. And thus I aspired to preach the gospel, not where Christ was already named. I, I told you this last week. He wanted to preach, not to build, he says, so as to build on another man's foundation. He says, but I, uh, just as it's written in Isaiah 52, he says, that they who had no news of him shall see. They who have not heard shall understand. In other words, his calling was, I got to go to the people who, who haven't heard. And so we pick up today with this verse. And for this very reason, he says, I have often been prevented from coming to you. What reason? Well, the reason that I had to keep preaching to the guys who hadn't heard yet. You guys have already heard. So I'm not, you know, he wasn't kind of one of those preachers likes to preach to the choir, so to speak. He had the heart of what I call of an evangelist. You know, he had that, that calling from God to get the gospel out to people that were perishing, that hadn't heard the gospel, and he wanted to be the guy to bring them the good news. Have you found out about the way to God? Jesus is that way. And he preached clearly. Christ was the way to God. The, the, the answer for our sin, the, 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 the cleansing of our conscience, all the things what God does for us through his Son. Paul says, that's what I was busy. I, will, I wanted to come see you, he says. But I was prevented because I was busy doing what? Seeing God work in all the Gentiles. Now, I mentioned this last week. How popular would this be, this idea of a Jewish Pharisee bringing faith to a bunch of Gentiles? You know, I mean, I'm talking, I'm talking about like back in Jerusalem. If he goes back to Jerusalem, are they going to give him a standing ovation? Great job going out on those missionary journeys. No. The, the Jewish mindset was, we're God's chosen people. Everyone else is dogs. And by the way, that's what they call Gentiles, dogs in Israel. We're, we're just, just like nothing. And if it sounds like bad, it is. Okay, they mean it as a derogatory comment. And Paul is saying, but God, God, in, by his spirit, already prophesied in Isaiah. He, and we went over what the scriptures that he quoted from Deuteronomy, from Samuel, from the Psalms. God said he was going to let the Messiah be a light to the whole world, not just the Jews. Although Paul did acknowledge, he wrote, salvation was first to the Jew, but then it's to what? To us, the Gentiles. And so he says, I wanted to come see you, but I was busy. I mean, really, that's what he's... He hasn't been there yet, okay? He doesn't know these people, so he's, he's kind of, you know, touching on points in a delicate way, you know, like when you, you sometimes when you're talking to somebody you, ha you haven't really had a face-to-face -face with or you don't know personally, but you're, you're talking about some real intimate things of the heart of our faith. You got to, you know, have a little tact. My wife says I'm getting better. Okay, I'm, it's taken 35 years for the Lord to work me over, but I used to just tell people, you're screwed up, man. You need Jesus. She'd be like, honey, you know, you might hurt their feelings saying that, but they are. No, honey, you should say, you know, we're all works in progress. We all need to see, I, I see how much I've mellowed. But Paul... Paul wanted to go to Rome. He had this in his heart. He really did want to go to Rome. For some reason, now you, you ask, why would a missionary with this heart for the, the people who don't have the gospel have such a, like, a strong urge inside him to want to go to this, this place, this, this dot on a map? But if you know world history, that dot at that particular moment in history was the capital or the, 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 the center of the known world, as it would be called in the history books. It is the, it is the seat of power of world domination. And Paul, with the heart of an evangelist, he just wants to get to the, like, get me to the, get me to the epicenter. If I can just splash down the gospel there, it'll just spread out like ripples in a pond, you know? Let's just go for the gospel. This guy doesn't aim low at all. You know, when Paul's trying to get the gospel, he's like, let's see. But you already, he says, but you already had the gospel named. So, you, so he was aware that there, 
there must have been someone at Pentecost. Remember the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts, how the apostles were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they went outside after this. The tongues of fire came down, the Holy Spirit in tongues of fire caused them to go out, and each one was proclaiming the mighty deeds of God in a different language. And the people were in amazement. I mean, this is Passover time. People from all over the world have gathered in Jerusalem, and yet the guys from Egypt are going, how is it we hear this guy is speaking perfect Egyptian? And the guys from Rome, how do we hear these guys speaking in Italian? Aren't these guys all Galileans? And how do they know my dialect? Well, it wasn't them that knew the dialect. Who was it? It was the Holy Spirit. He knows every dialect. And he gave them the gift. Now, I call it cheating because I have studied foreign language, starting with English, because I grew up speaking Italian at home. English is weird. I'm just telling you. It's a fact. It is weird. It is one of the hardest languages. If you don't start with it, it's not that easy. It's got weird words, deja vu. It's not even an English word. They stole it from the French. You know, they pick up all these words. Kindergarten. Kindergarten. You know where that's from, right? That's German. We put that in our Wiedersehen. Wait, what? A Wiedersehen. It's German. You know, you're supposed to speak in one language. They don't do it. They collected a bunch and jumbled it all up and called the English. And poor, yeah, yeah. And you? Well, the things is the the things that we have. You know, we we. Paul Paul is sitting there going, guys. I I wanted to get to you. I wanted to preach to you. I want you to know, this good things about the Lord. I, in fact, I want to come to see you. And now he's going to tell that, that I mean, he, he said last week his aspiration, what he really aspired to was to not lay on another man's foundation, not to build on another man's work. He wanted to go where no one else had gone. He, he's my Star Trek hero. Go where no man has gone before. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.